Good morning and a very warm welcome to all the education officers and the teachers who are joining us via YouTube and Zoom platform. I, Shikha, extend my regards and welcome all of you in this special webinar organized to discuss the National Education Policy 2020 Changes and Impact. National Education Policy 2020 Changes and Impact. That is the topic of the discussion today and in this district level webinar organized for the teachers of Imphal East Manipur. We will be discussing the policy in detail where our master trainer will be talking at length, explaining the entire policy in detail to the teachers in simple words through simple examples. So a very warm welcome to all the officers and the teachers who are joining us in this session. This is a joint collaboration of Sri Aurobindo Society and Samagri Siksha Imphal East Manipur. Sri Aurobindo Society has started this initiative of orienting the teachers of the country on the National Education Policy 2020. And in this series of webinar, we have successfully conducted 306 webinars till date where the teachers have been oriented Hello. about the national education policy 2020 Hello. and in each webinar the teachers have actively participated and they have tried their best to understand the policy so in manipur also we've done two district level webinars and this is our third one in imphal east for the teachers of imphal east so a very warm welcome to all the teachers who are joining us and watching us from the YouTube channel of Sri Aurobindo Society ZII EI platform. It is an honor and pleasure that in this session we'll be joined by several guests and I extend my regards to all of them. As chief guest in this session, we'll be joined by Sri M. Premchandra Singh, MES Zonal Education Officer, Zone 2 Imphal East Manipur. A special guest will be joined by Sri S. Shanta Kumar Singh, MES, DI of Schools, ZEO Zone 2, Imphal East, Manipur. Sri Sanjoy Naurim, MES, AI of Schools, ZEO Zone 2, Imphal East, Manipur. And Sri Ashok Sharma, National Training Head, Rupantar, Sri Aurobindo Society. I also welcome and extend my regards to our district coordinator, Mr. Haubom, it is through his efforts that we are able to organize this webinar in Imphal East. And I also welcome our master trainer of this session, Mr. Rohit Bora, who will be talking in English, explaining the policy in detail to the teachers of Imphal East Manipur. So welcoming everyone, we are talking about National Education Policy 2020. Namaskar, swagat hai aap sabhi ka, Shri Aurobindo Society, और समग्र शिक्षा इम्फाल ईस्ट मणिपुर के सम्मिलित प्रयास में यहां उपस्थित सभी शिक्षकों का शिक्षा अधिकारियों का स्वागत करती हूं मैं और साथ-साथ स्वागत करूंगी हमारे मास्टर ट्रेनर और डिस्ट्रिक्ट कोऑर्डिनेटर का भी इसमें इस समय हमारे साथ हम बातचीत कर रहे हैं राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति 2020 परिवर्तन एवं अतिथियों का स्वागत करते हुए मैं रुक करूंगी इनवाइट करूंगी हमारे रिस्पेक्टेड अशोक सर से अनुरोध करूंगी रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी उनसे कि हम सभी को संबोधित करें नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी 2020 के ऊपर इस वेबिनार में सभी शिक्षकों को संबोधित करें सर हमारे मेंटर और गुरु हैं उनके गाइडेंस और मेंटरशिप में ही इस वेबिनार को आयोजित कर रही है श्री औरबिंदु सोसाइटी सर से रिक्वेस्ट करूंगी कि सभी को संबोधित करें अपने विचार इस मंच पर रखें ओवर टू यू सर Good morning. Namaskar. I am Ashok. I am in the society of Pratinidhi. I am in Manipur. I am in the education officers and shikshak teachers. I am in this webinar. I am in this webinar. We have a lot of people who are in the world. We have a lot of people who are in the जी एमएस जोनल एजुकेशन ऑफिसर एवं स्पेशल गेस्ट के रूप में श्री संत कुमार सिंह जी और सं, संजोय नोरम जी एवं अन्य सभी एजुकेशन ऑफिसर्स जिन्होंने हमारा सहयोग स्वीकार किया और हमें ये वेबिनार करने का मौका दिया मैं हृदय से उनका आभार व्यक्त करना चाहता हूं 
तमाम शिक्षकों से अनुरोध है कि आज के उस सेशन को वो सेशन ना बनने दें बल्कि एक डिस्कशन मंच के रूप में उसे स्थापित करें उनके मन में जो भी डाउट्स हैं जो कंफ्यूजन है जो क्वेश्चन है वो सब अपने चैट बॉक्स के माध्यम से हमारे मास्टर ट्रेनर तक वो पहुंचने चाहिए मैं विश्वास दिलाता हूं कि आपके हर प्रश्न का आंसर हम देने का प्रयास करेंगे आपके हर डाउट और कंफ्यूजन को दूर करने का प्रयास करेंगे जहां तक शिक्षा की बात है निश्चित रूप से किसी भी देश की शिक्षा ये डिटरमाइन करती है निश्चित करती है कि वो देश कहाँ जाएगा उसका भविष्य क्या होगा इसलिए शिक्षा में लगातार परिवर्तन की आवश्यकता है देश स्वतंत्र हुआ तो निश्चित रूप से परिवर्तन शुरू हुआ परिवर्तन शुरू हुआ उन्नीस सौ अड़सठ उन्नीस सौ छियासी में शिक्षा नीति आई बहुत सारे संशोधन हुए शिक्षा के अधिकार जैसा महत्वपूर्ण संशोधन भी हुआ लेकिन फैक्ट यह है कि मैकाले की शिक्षा पद्धति को हम तोड़ नहीं पाए हम उससे बाहर नहीं निकल पाए चौतीस वर्षों के बाद ही सही लेकिन हमारे सामने आज एक ऐसी शिक्षा नीति है जिसके आधार पर हम मैकाले की पहनाई गई उन बेड़ियों को तोड़ सकते हैं और हम भारत में शिक्षा नहीं शिक्षा में भारत का समावेश कर हम एक ऐसे भारत का निर्माण कर सकते हैं जो विश्व हमसे चाहता है जो भारतवासी स्वप्न देखते हैं कल्पना करते हैं और श्री अरविंदो सोसाइटी जिसकी उम्मीद रखती है इसीलिए श्री अरविंदो सोसाइटी ने यह संकल्प लिया है कि हम भारत के प्रत्येक शिक्षक तक न्यू एजुकेशन पॉलिसी पहुंचाने का प्रयास करेंगे आज उसी क्रम में हम 300 से ज्यादा डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स और छह स्टेट कंप्लीट कर चुके हैं भारतवर्ष में और आज उसी क्रम में हम मणिपुर के इम्फाल ईस्ट डिस्ट्रिक्ट में हैं और हम ये आशा रखते हैं कि आज का ये सेशन निश्चित रूप से जो सैकड़ों पन्नों में समाई हुई शिक्षा नीति है वो हमारे मास्टर ट्रेनर के द्वारा आपके हृदय तक पहुंचेगी शिक्षकों तक पहुंचेगी शिक्षक उसे एक्सेप्ट करेंगे और उसे इंप्लीमेंट करेंगे ऐसी आशा हम रखते हैं मैं पुनः एक बार तमाम शिक्षा अधिकारी जिन्होंने हमारे सहयोग को स्वीकार किया उन्हें हृदय से धन्यवाद करना चाहता हूं और शिक्षकों से यह अनुरोध करना चाहता हूं कि अगर वो वास्तव में भारत में क्रांति चाहते हैं तो शिक्षा की क्रांति सारी क्रांतियों की जननी है और उनके जनक कर कोई कोई है तो वो केवल और केवल आप लोग हैं जो आज हमारे सामने निश्चित रूप से 21वीं सदी में भारत में शिक्षा की क्रांति होगी उसे दुनिया की कोई ताकत रोक नहीं सकती है जरूरत इस बात की है कि इतिहास में अग्रिम पंक्ति का कौन शिक्षक अपना नाम दर्ज कराना चाहता है और मैं ये आशा रखता हूं कि मणिपुर के इम्फाल ईस्ट के तमाम शिक्षक इच्छुक होंगे कि इतिहास में उनका नाम भी दर्ज हो उनका नाम भी लिखा जाए इसलिए आज की शिक्षा नीति को बहुत तन्मयता के साथ मनोयोग के साथ सुनना है समझना है और उससे अपने यहाँ इंप्लीमेंट करना है ये हम सब आप लोगों से आशा रखते हैं पुनः एक बार तमाम शिक्षा अधिकारी तमाम टीचर्स और हमारी मेंबर्स श्री अरविंदो सोसाइटी के ऑपरेशन ट्रेनिंग टेक्निकल टीम के वो तमाम मेंबर जो हमारी वेबिनार को निर्बाध बनाने में सहायक और समर्थन करते हैं उन सभी का मैं पुनः एक बार हृदय से धन्यवाद करना चाहूंगा बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत आभार थैंक यू सो मच रिस्पेक्टेड अशोक सर फॉर ड्रेसिंग ऑल ऑफ अस इन दिस सेशन बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद हमारे साथ इस मंच पर जुड़ने के लिए हमें संबोधित करने के लिए so so what respected ashok sir was saying i would just like to uh, tell all of you in brief sir spoke on various points uh, he first of all he made the request to the teachers to ensure that they make this webin webinar a successful one they make the session an interactive one and share their views and feedback through the chat box section of youtube channel that is very important also so that uh, we also are able to determine whether the teachers are understanding uh, the session or not they are they are understanding the various high points of the policy so it is very important that the teachers share their views and feedback through the chat box section he also spoke about how uh, talking about education he to spoke about how education paves way for the growth and success of 
any country and how we indians we have got this opportunity through this nep 2020 this through this new education policy we have got this opportunity to contribute together in the success and the growth of the country he also urged the teachers to understand this policy in detail through this webinar organized for them uh, so that they can when they implement this policy at the grassroots level the process is seamless for them easier for them they do not face any kind of problem in the implementation process of the national education policy 2020 so that was what respected ashok sir was saying i just summarized it for all the teachers to understand it we are talking about national education policy 2020 the webinar is being organized where the master trainer will start the training session in a couple of minutes later the nep 2020 as we know is a guiding philosophy for changing the learning landscape making education holistic and for building stronger foundation for a well established bharat there are various facets to this, this national education policies which i'm not going to talk about in that is the job of our master trainer and who's an expert in it and will also ensure that you teachers understand this policy in detail but for now it is a completely an honor and pleasure that our chief guest is here with us she m premchandra singh me any toy the device a wifi Shri M. Premchandra Singh, MES, Zonal Education Officer, Zone 2, Imphal, East Manipur. Sir is here with us. May I request you, sir, to share your views about this National Education Policy 2020 and motivate the teachers to participate actively and understand this policy in detail. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone participating in this webinar. As of all, I would like to thank to the organizer of Sri Aurobindo Society and uh, Sarmagra Siksa in Palace for organizing a district level webinar on National Education Policy 2020 on the theme, impact and changes. So secondly, I feel very happy on joining the inaugural session of the district level webinar and also share my sincere gratitude to the work, to the organizer of the Orbindo Society for taking as a part in educational planning in full. Please continue, sir. So secondly, I would like to thanks for uh, organizing such a webinar in my district and a sincere gratitude to the Sri Aurobindo Society for taking an initiative part as a part in the educational planning for full implementation of National Education Policy 2020 at this harsh juncture of COVID-19 pandemic. On this inaugural session, I show my gratitude to Sri Asok Sharma, National Training Head, Orbindo Society, and secondly, Sri A. S. Santa Kumar Singh, the I of Schools, District Education Office, Imphalis, and lastly, Sri Sanjoy Naurem, Assistant Inspector of Schools, JDO Zone 2 Imphalis, for joining this program or webinar. Lastly, I would like to thanks to all the teacher participants of this webinar. As we know, education is the fundamental things for achieving full human potential, developing an equitable and just society for promoting national development. The National Education Policy 2020 lays emphasis on the development of the creative 
potential of its individuals. The National Education Policy 1996, which was modified 1992 focus mainly on the issues of access and equity. While in this new education policy, 2020, focus on access, equity, equality, quality, affordability, and accountability, thereby transforming India into a global superpower in the year to come. It is also focused on the center of changes of teachers and the teachers' conditions for achieving the new education policy. According to National Education Policy 2020, particularly in the school education, mention may be focused on the following points. Early childhood care and education, which is in the first point and the second foundational literacy and numeracy. And the third one, controlling, curtailing dropout rate and ensuring universal access to education at all level. Number four, curriculum and pedagogy in schools. Number five, teachers. Six, equitable and in inclusive education. Number seven, effective resourcing and effect. Number eight, standard setting and aggregation for school education. Stopping commercialization of education. These are the seven points which is mainly discussed on the school education part in the national education policy. So the main idea of this various point will be discussed later on by the various experts from the Orbindo Society. So I would like to request all the teacher participants of this district to join the webinar up to the end of the sessions to share your thoughts and idea for bringing up this education policy, a successful policy in our district also. Thank you all to all the participants and have a great day. Thank you so much, sir. Have a great day too. You also have a great day too. Thank you so much for addressing us all and sharing your views about the National Education Policy 2020. And uh, you rightfully mentioned about the various high points of this National Education Policy. And I would say that you have kind of prepared a groundwork for our master trainer. It was definitely going to help him conduct the session in a couple of minutes later and thank you so much for mentioning all the ma main points uh, related to school education that are mentioned in this national education policy 2020 thank you so much sir for joining in the session so education as we say is the uh, is the passport to the future the preparation for which begins today and we are doing this preparation today so that we all have a better future tomorrow for our country and through this webinar we are ensuring that we equip and empower the teachers we equip the teachers and orient them with the national education policy 2020 so that uh, through the implementation process when they uh, they are through the implementation process they do not face any kind of problem in the process so that is the objective of organizing this district level webinar and today we are in imphal east manipur right now it is an honor and pleasure that our special guest, Sri S. Shantakumar Singh, MES, DIO of Schools, ZEO, Zone 2, Imphal East Manipur. Sir is here with us. May I request him to share his views on National Education Policy 2020? Oh, sir. So may I request you to unmute your device, please.
Shri S. Shant Shantakumar Singh, MES, sir. <clears throat> A very good afternoon to all the participants present in this webinar, National Education Policy 2020, Census and Impact, organized by Samagra Siksa, Impal East, and Sri Arvindo Society. First, I would like to thank Sri Asok Sarma, National Training Head of Sri Arbindo Society. Again, I would like to thank our Zonal Education Officer, Sri M. Prem Chandra Singh, Manipur Education Service, MES, the present ZEO, Imphal East, Manipur. And Sri Sanjoy Naurem, Manipur Education Service, now, Assistant Inspector of Schools under Zonal Education Office, Zone 2, Imphal East. And that those master trainers conducting this training session. Again, I would like to extend my welcome and thanks to all the teachers participate in this webinar organized by Samagra Siksha Avian, Imphal East, and Sri Arvindo Society under this Donal Education Office. As we know, teachers are the bridge between a coming generation and uh, an ending generation. So taking this advantage, let me take the opportunity to express a few words, which I think most important in this National Education Policy 2020. A change in teachers' community is very important. What was not in the National Policy of Education 1986, 1992, but what is now in New Education Policy 2020? Yes, we know teachers truly save the future of our children and therefore the future of our nation. The changes in national education policy 2020 will bring the quality of training, recruitment, deployment, service condition, and empowerment of teachers. The high respect of the teachers and the high status of teaching profession is revived and revamped in this new education policy, which is waiting for a long time in our society. As per national education policy, the harmful practice of excessive teacher transfer will be stopped. This will ensure that teachers can build relationships with the students and can invest their effort to their community. So further, National Education Policy 2020 will have a continuous professional development known as CPD. The teacher will be given constant opportunity for self-improvement and to learn the latest innovate, innovations and will advance in their profession. Platform will be developed so that teachers may share ideas and the best practices. Again, Every teacher will have to participate at least 50 hours of continuous professional development opportunities every year. Teachers doing outstanding work will be recognized, promoted, 
and will be given high salary. A system of multiple parameters for proper assessment of performance will be developed based on peer revives, attendance, commitment, hours of CPD and other forms of service to the school and community, which are not found in National Policy of Education 1986. So my trust area of national education policy is upon the teachers who are the bridges between a dying generation and an upcoming generation. So I request to everyone in the teacher community to dedicate your hard work for the nation and to become India a superpower. So this is the idea that I want to express to all our respected teachers in this Impal East district, particularly. So let me stop here. Thanks everyone. Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your views about national education policy and specifically you share, threw light on the role of teachers and how new education policy 2020 will be a game changer for all of us and for the teachers also. It will equip them, empower the teachers of our nation who play a crucial and a very vital role in the uh, development of the country. Thank you so much for sharing your views. Thank you so much, sir. So with that, it is time for me to invite our next special guest, Sri Sanjoy Naurem, MES, AI of Schools, ZEO Zone 2 Imphal, East Manipur. Sir, share your views about the National Education Policy 2020 and motivate the teachers joining us in this session. Uh, respected Sri M. Prem Chandra Singh, Donate Education Officer, ZEO Zone 2 Imphal is, District Chief Guest of today's webinar, Sri S. Santakumar Singh, the IOB Schools, ZEO Zone 2 Impal is a special guest of this webinar. Sri Ashok Sharma, National Training Head, Rupantar Sri Arubindo Society, all the participants and teachers. A very good afternoon to you all. It gives me immense pleasure to participate as the special guest in today's webinar. First of all, I would like, I would like to thank Sri Samag Samagra Siksha Ipal East and Sri Aurobindo Society for organizing this webinar on National Policy of Ed National Education Policy 2020 Changes and Impact. As we all know that the National Education Policy 2020 is the first education policy of the 21st century. It aims to address many growing development imperatives of our country. This policy proposes the revision and revamping of all aspects of the educational structure, including its regulation and governance to create a system that is aligned with the aspirational goals of the 21st century education. The unfinished agenda of the National Policy of Education 1986, modified in 1992, is appropriately dealt within this National Education Policy 2020. A major development of National Education Policy 1986, modified in 1992, has been the right of children to free and compulsory education act 2009. Uh, there are different focus areas in the National Education Policy 2020. Let, let me take up one of the most important vision of school education. That is the new pedagogical and curricular restructuring of five plus three plus three plus four, covering ages three to 18 years against the old policy of 10 plus two system. In the previous policy, a group of three to six years are not covered in the 10 plus two structure as class one begins from uh, begins at the age of six years. In this new education policy, 
2020, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 structure, a strong base of early childhood care and education, ECCCE from S3 years is also included. With aim at promoting overall learning, development, and well being. So I have no doubt that the National Education Policy 2020 would transform the education sector and will play an important role in shaping future generation of our country. I hope this webinar will help all the stakeholders, especially teachers participating in this webinar to understand thoroughly <coughs> about the NEP 2020. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for sharing your views about the National Education Policy 2020. You mentioned the main high points of the policy. You mentioned about the FNM F5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, the new structure in the, in the school education and uh, various other points. Thank you so much for mentioning them. As I said earlier for sir, also that now all our guests have prepared a groundwork for our master trainer who is almost about to start the session now. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us in this session. Uh, we are talking about National Education Policy 2020. And before we begin this webinar, the orientation session should begin. I would like to give a very important piece of information to all the teachers who are joining us from Imphal East Manipur and to all the other teachers who are watching us from other parts of the country, I would like to inform them about Teacher Innovation Award. Teacher Innovation Award. It is an initiative of ZII-EI program. Sri Aurobindo Society and HDFC Bank together bring in ZII-EI, under which every year the Teacher Innovation Awards are organized, where the teachers share their innovative teaching practices that are based on zero investment innovation and those ideas are selected by Sri Aurobindo Society and the teachers are felicitated at the national level event every year. This year, again, the lines have opened, registrations are open and you can, uh, the teachers have this opportunity to share their zero investment based innovative teaching ideas, their TLMs that they implement in their classes with Sri Aurobindo Society. So I urge the teachers and request them to share their best uh, teaching practices with us. Oh, in the past also Manipur teachers have actively participated in Teacher Innovation Award and they have shared their teaching learning materials, innovative teaching ideas with uh, Shreya Aurobindo Society. So I would request them to do the same again this year and uh, get this opportunity to win the Teacher Innovation Award again this year too. So for that, they need to share their ideas with us for which they have two options. The first one is they can either download ZII EI Innovative Parshala app and through that they can register for Teacher Innovation Award and share their ideas with us. And the other medium is through the ZII Sri Aurobindo Society ZII EI Facebook page. You can go there and find a link uh, where you the teachers can submit their innovative teaching ideas that are implemented in the classes uh, with Sri Aurobindo Society. So I hope that the teachers make the most of this opportunity that has come their way. The lines are open only till the 15th of Feb. So you do not have much of time in hand. So I would request all of you to share your best ideas, best teaching ideas with Sri Aurobindo Society and participate in the Teacher Innovation Award. So with that piece of information for all of you, now it is time to move towards the orientation session. For that, I would like to request and invite our master trainer, Mr. Rohit Bora, to take over the webinar and start the ori orientation session and orient the teachers in detail on the new education policy 2020. Over to you, Mr. Rohit, sir. Thank you so much, Sika, ma'am, for wonderfully connecting the session till now. Thank you so much. Um, uh, a very good, uh, good afternoon. Yeah, a very good afternoon to everyone. I'm Rohit, and I, on behalf of Sri Aurobindo Society, welcome everyone to our NEP session of Manipur East Imphal District. Before starting the session, I would like to uh, give my heartiest thanks to Asok, sir, our national training head, for giving us the opportunity for conducting this session and for giving me the platform for uh, taking the webinar. 
and also i'd like to welcome all the dignitaries all the chief guests who are present with us in this webinar before starting the session i'd like to take a few names i am I'm watching the session live also over YouTube, and I can see a lot of names over here who have been continuously interacting with us. So I'd like to take a few names. Gautam Nongmaitam, Veronica Ma'am, Shushma, Shushma Ningombam, Kamgambam, James Metal, Kiran Bala Hijam. A very good afternoon to all the all the participants who have been who are watching us through social media also. So today we have gathered today for, for a discussion on NEP. National Education Policy 2020. It has been a talk of the nation from the time it has been started. So um, before starting the session, I would like to say a few, uh, in any kind of session or any kind of webinar, there are certain rules and regulations. So I have also got certain rules and regulations. First of all, uh, those who are watching through YouTube and also through Zoom Live, I would request everyone to take a pen and a paper so that you can note down your queries and you can also ask your queries through chat box over Zoom platform or over YouTube also. Yeah. So um, without wasting any time, I would like to share the screen. We have prepared one PPT so that we can have a clear understanding of the NEP. I hope my screen is visible. And yes, one more thing. I'll be interacting with every all the all the teachers uh, over YouTube, and I I I it will be glad to go on through the chat boxes because so that we can make it a two way interaction instead of only one way interaction, right? So coming about uh, talking about NEP twenty twenty and innovative Pachala. When we talk about National Education Policy 2020, we have to take the name of one person. Um, and if we talk about like whose mastermind is, uh, who is behind the idea of as National Education Policy 2020, then it's uh, Kasturi uh, Kast Ranjan Swami. He was an ISRO head and it's the idea of his, whoever is over what? Is my, uh, hello? Uh, Please unmute yourself. Head of office, Major Bika. Is my PPD visible properly? Can please respond? Yes, no. I'll maximize. Kya hai but maximize ho raha hai. Okay. Before starting with National Education Policy 2020, you might be having a doubt like what you most of you might be knowing about Sri Aurobindo Society, but most of you uh, might not be aware about Sri Aurobindo Society. So I would like to give you a brief, small briefing about Sri Aurobindo Society, who we are and on what things we are working on. So Sri Aurobindo Society, we have been working for individual perfection, collective consciousness from 1960 onwards. and um, from the Indian government, we have got the important recognition of Institute of National Importance from the Indian government. And this recognition has been given to only a few of the institutes all across India. So if I ask one question to all of you, if you respond me through the chat box, if we talk about engineering colleges, if I talk about engineering colleges, which engineering college comes to your mind if you want if so one student wants to go to the topmost engineering institute of India or topmost institute of medical in India, so which institute's name comes to your mind in the first place? Can you chat? Can you respond to the chat box? I don't think my screen is visible. Just... 
Okay. So yeah, I'm getting responses like Meena Ma'am said, IIT, Pramanand Ma'am said, IIT, AIMS, yeah, exactly. IIT and AIMS, like, because this institutes, along with working for the development of, along with giving education to the students, they are also working for the overall development of the education system, how they can work in a grassroots level. Thank you so much for the responses. Similarly, Sri Aurobindo Society, along with various other uh, works, we have been working for the overall development of the education system, how we can work in a grassroots level. And that's the reason why we have also been given the, uh, the recognition of Institute of National Importance. Our head office is in Pondicherry. And along with education, we have been working in various other fields also. If we talk about our journey, I would like to give you a small briefing about our journey ZIIA program. Now, most of you might be having this doubt that today we are we have gathered to discuss on NEP 2020, right? But why we are talking about ZIIA and why uh, we are talking about Sri Aurobindo Society? But there's a big connection between ZIAI and NEP. So just like every movie have got one suspense, so in my session also there's suspense, which I'll be connecting in towards the end. So I request everyone to stay connecting till the end. So talking about ZIAI, which is the full form is uh, Zero Investment Innovation for Education Initiative. Uh, if you talk about the journey, it was started in 2015. We started from the UP government. When we started taking the sessions, we uh, we approached UP government for and we asked them permission for taking sessions of the teachers on moral values. And when we're taking sessions on the moral values, firstly we went for the officers, then we for the teachers. Almost fifteen thousand teachers under Ramsa, we took under fifteen thousand teachers under Ramsa. We distributed into different batches and we started taking the sessions on moral values. So when we're having sessions on moral values. On one day, we were having one question answer round where all the teachers were uh, gathered and they were discussing different problems which they were facing in their schools. Like one teacher uh, uh, among in, during the question answer round, one teacher said that, sir, uh, I have one query. Uh, if someone of you have got solutions, please let me know. He said that, um, so when, I take, uh, when I'm taking classes of various subjects, I can take it very easily. But when it comes to mathematics, especially angles, I don't know what happens that I cannot connect it with the students. I'm not being able to give them uh, a proper understanding of angles. Uh, in examinations, when they get questions for which is 45 degree, which is 90 degree, which is 30 degree, most of the students used to make mistakes. Then one of the teacher, what he did, he was sitting among, amongst the audience only. He stood up and he said, this, sir, this is very simple for me. I've been solving this problem for my long back of time. And without saying another word, he took one chalk and went towards the door. And he drew one semicircle in the door. Right? This one looks like one semicircle in a D shape with this, um, in, the, uh, in front of the door, in the downside of the door. Then he asked the, all the teachers one question. Does your students go outside? for recess or some any other work. He said, of course, they go for toilet and other stuff. He said that, but now what I do in, our, in my class, he drew different angles like zero degree, 30 degree, just like a semicircle. In that the one which he have drawn um, in the door, he drew uh, at different angles, zero degree, 10 degree, 30 degree, different angles. Now, when his students used to go out for, recess, for toilet or, or some other stuff, um, he, he tells them that you can go out but you have to open the door at 30 degree. So before going out of the class, the student have to make the door, bring the door uh, panel to 30 degree. Then only the student can go out. Again, when he comes back, so may I come in, ma'am, may I come in? Then they, they used to tell him that, yes, you can come in, but you have to open the door at 60 degree. Again, the student um, starts opening the door, taking the panel of the door towards 60 degree. And the teacher, when he started implementing this idea in his class, he noticed that the students, not only during the math period, but even in, in the recess time also, even in the break time also, they, used, uh, they were playing with the door. And unknowingly, they, they were learning math even in the break time. So um, this way, 
many teachers started uh, sharing their own ideas. Some teachers say that I used to take the students outside and try to connect them to the environment. Or uh, some teachers say that um, I used to teach the students with the available resources. Suppose for square, for rectangle, I used the available resources that are there in the class. Now, when we were listening to these ideas, one thought came to our mind. This simple, simple ideas, uh, we are only dealing with uh, almost 15,000 teachers at that point of time. But maybe there are so small, small ideas many teachers might be using all across India. Not, and there might be many, many ideas which the teachers are using in their classrooms, in their schools. But these, those ideas are, uh, have not been able to come out of that classroom. Maybe in your school, suppose in East Imphal, one idea you are using in your school, but that idea is only limited within your school. Maybe someone from that block, that district also, they might not know about your idea. So we thought, uh, we, we had a discussion with all the officials, and we, when we thought that if we can make one platform, and that platform such that those ideas should is not only limited to that classroom, not only to that block, not only to this and circulate those ideas all across India. If suppose you are sharing, you are using one idea, no school in is involved, if, and if that idea is being implemented in Adamati uh, or Delhi or Bonicherry, yeah. won't that be a good idea? What do you think? Do you think that will be a good no. idea if we have a kind of platform like that? You can respond through yes or no through a chat box. If we can have a platform, Definitely. Soibam sir said yes. Zakim sir said yes. Priyanshu sir said yes. Definitely. If we can create such platform, it will be a great idea. And just with that small thought, we started our uh, a program that is Zero Investment Innovation for uh, ZIIEI, Zero Investment Innovation for Education Initiative, where we started going to different places. We started interacting with all the teachers and we started collecting ideas. And now those ideas are not only limited to those classrooms, but is being circulated all across India. Thank you so much for the responses. Yeah, uh, so if we, if we talk about small achievements of ZIIEI, if you talk about small achievements, till now, we have connected with 22 lakh plus teachers for the training program on the ZIIEI. And Sri Aurobindo Society, ZIIEI, have been nominated as the Asia's largest training program. Till now, we have prepared, we have launched 54 innovative booklets where you'll be getting such small, small ideas which the teachers have shared. And apart from the government schools, we have also reached private institutions through social media campaign. And 1,500 plus teachers have been given recognition in the national level um, and from our Ramesh Procreology. They got rewarded for the national level reward system, about which uh, Sikha Mam have been talking about a few minutes back. We are, she have been talking about TIA, Teachers Innovation Award. So yes, again, I would like to add uh, one more point that if you have got small ideas, which you think can be, which can create a big impact, you can also share your ideas to TIA, Teachers Innovation Award. And if you want to more uh, know a uh, more, little bit more, um, someone is saying the screen is not readable. Rita, sir, uh, you can do one thing. Might be due to network issues. The, the quality of your video is... Uh, it's less, that's why the screen is not visible. You can increase the quality. You can, you will get it at top right corner, increase to 240p or 480p. You will get a good quality video. And if you want to more know a little bit more about the program, then you can go to the, uh, the website, www.ziiei.com. I repeat, www.ziiei.com. You can visit there and you can get all the ideas. Now, now you might be having a doubt that, okay, fine. So NEP is a 400-page total, uh, a 400-page idea policy, right? 
So how come, we, what are the things we are going to learn today about NEP? So here are the expected outcomes which we'll be learning through this PPT. How we are going to connect the early childhood care and education, how we are going to give access to the early childhood care and education, how we are going to bring equality and inclusion among both the schools, among, among all the students and among all the schools also, like um, both among private and government schools. Now, when I'm talking about equality among private and government schools, yeah, I would like to mention, someone say, please mention the website again. Okay, I'm sharing the website again. It's www.ziei.com. Right. So second point is we'll be talking about how we are going to bring equality among the private schools and government schools and among all the students. Now, when I talk about equality among, among private and government schools, the name of one state, one state constantly comes to my mind. They have been doing marvelous job in developing the government schools, and they have been in the news latest in lately. Can I? Uh, can anyone guess which state I'm talking about? One state have been doing marvelous in their government schools. And right now, you cannot differentiate which one is government school, which one is private school. Can anyone guess what, what, which state I'm talking about? Thank you so much, Susma, ma'am. Delhi, right? Of course, many states have been working. All the states have been working marvelously lately. But Delhi have been in uh, news currently. And they have, are you, if you have looked at the videos of the government schools, you might see that uh, you cannot recognize whether it's a private school or government school. So uh, bringing that equality among all, the, all in, among all the states. Third, how we are going to bring the two crore out of school students, how we are going to reduce the dropout rates, how we are going to achieve the sustainable development goals of which have been fixed by SDG4 how we are going to bring the foundational literacy and numeracy, how we're going to achieve FLN, right? Already we have started NAS survey and all. Uh, we have been working currently al along FLN. And how uh, we are going to achieve the 21st century skills, how we are going to reduce the resources of the school complexes, how we are going to remove the language barrier among the students, and how private and government schools have been uh, will be bring into one common platform. So these are the common expected outcomes which we are going to achieve. Now, coming to, uh, before going to the again about, about the NEP, I'd like to get brief about the evolution of education policy which started in India. Now, before going to that, I would like to again ask one. My questions are very simple, so you can, you can answer easily. So my next question is, can anyone tell me that when did our nation got independence? When did our nation got independence? Chat box. Yeah, I'm looking at the, looking at the responses of uh, YouTube. Bial Taklila Bam said 1947. Anjana Ma'am. Soy Bam. Suresh Sir said Bimal Sir said 1947. Yeah, 1947. Everyone said 1947 exactly. 15 August 1947. Now, after independence, different departments started working on different things in development of the different things. And India also started working in the education policy also. And the first education policy, which is known as University Education Commission, came into picture in 1948 to 1949. This was uh, taking place under the, this is also known as Radha Krishnan Commission because uh, Sarvapalli Radha Krishnan sir was the chairman when this commission was started. So first University Education Commission, came into picture in 1948 to 1949. Then the next one came, in, uh, which is known as Secondary Education Commission from 1952 to 53. Education Commission under D.S. Kothari. I think we have been discussing a lot about this under D.S. Kothari. Then the first education policy came into picture in 19, on 1968, National Policy on Education 1968. Now, three dates are very important for us. First is 1968, National Policy on Education. Then 1986, National Policy on Education second. Then uh, National Education Policy 2020. Now, before 2020, one big change came into picture, which uh, brought a lot of changes in the education system. In 2009, some, something big happened in 2009 in the education system, 
which brought a big change. Can can anyone there guess what I'm talking about? In 2009, a big change came in the education system. What is can can anyone guess what happened in 2009 in the education system? One act came. Right to Act Education. So Ibam Sir said exactly. Our right to Education came into picture in 2009. Then a big change revolution came in the education system. Now, so um, education process, the policies have been going continuous changes. But why, now main question is that why do we need NEP? Because if so many changes have been taking place, so why do we need NEP? Let's have a discussion on that. Why do we need NEP? You all might agree with, with me that education is necessary for achieving full human potential, development, and bringing equality in, among the society. And in 21st century, the way the job scenario is being changing, the way the new jobs are coming up, we cannot predict that after five years or after 10 years, what kind of jobs are awaiting for us. Suppose in 1960, someone, if someone have said, if someone have told us that um, uh, um, that there will be a time when we will be sitting in one place, suppose we'll be sitting in Manipur and we'll be interacting with someone from Delhi or from Assam through, uh, and we'll be able to see them and also hear them. So we might not have believed them at that point of time because at that time, internet was not popular, right? Internet birth came in 1980s. So, uh, and even at that point of time, the jobs were also very limited engineering, medical factories, it was being evolving. But at this point of time, we can see, how it, we, we all are witnessing that how the new kind of jobs are coming up. Today, even if before five years also, someone would have told us that you can earn a livelihood by making videos over a platform, which will be named as YouTube, or digital marketing, or content marketing, right? We would not have believed it, but yes, it exists today. Like, there's so many examples we can take. Like before our 20 years, when when someone used to go for shooting for a film, if you have to make a um, do a shoot, so the above shots, uh, the, they used to be, uh, take one big camera and used to move around in helicopters to take shots. Now it has been replaced by a sim very simple thing, very simple device, which is everywhere, which have reduced the cost also. That is drones. We have got drones for that. Right? So that way, we we cannot as we cannot predict what kind of jobs are coming up for the near future. But yes, we can prepare the students. So that's the reason why NEP, after a long gap of 34 years, NEP came into picture so that we can prepare the students for the upcoming jobs or upcoming uh, new generation, new things that are being coming up. Right. So yes, uh, let's have a look at vision. For every kind of job, uh, every kind of thing, if you want to achieve something in our normal life also, we all should have a vision. Right? Just like that, uh, let's have a look at what is the vision of our NEP 2020. Every nation says that they want to be the superpower. Everyone wants to be the superpower. They want to control everyone. But before becoming superpower, what is the most needed thing? We have to be a global knowledge superpower. So under NEP, it says that the education that is being imparted in both school and in both colleges, they should be, first of all, flexible. Every student should be able to adapt it. It should be flexible. It should be multidisciplinary. The students should be able to take the courses according to their interests, flexible, multidisciplinary, and holistic development, along with which we will be able to develop the 21st century skills and image are the outcomes. So that is the vision, main vision of NEP, uh, NEP 2020, that is it should be flexible, multidisciplinary and holistic development, which will help us in achieving the 21st century skills and image are the outcomes. Now, there are certain foundational pillars. Just like, um, can, can you tell me that for a strong building, if you want to make a strong building, if you want to make a strong house, what is the most important part of the whole building? What is the most important part of a whole building? If I talk about construction of a building, say multi-story building, what is the most important part? So I bomb said pillar, one masses uh, foundation, Zakim Sir said foundation, Surma, 
Surmala Mem said foundation, foundation. Like Ram sir also said, foundation of a Jew. Exactly. Thank you so much. I'm not being able to take all the names because whatever is being popping up in front of me, I'm being able to take that names only. Raju sir also said pillar. Exactly. Foundational pillars. Just like that, our NEP have also got five foundational pillars. First of all, access, accessibility. The education should reach each and every student. Next, equality. We have been talking lately about equality, bringing equality among all the students and also equality among private and government schools. Third is quality, to bring quality education among the students. Fourth is affordability. Everyone from every segment of the society should be able to afford the education. Even now, the government is giving a lot of resources, making it affordable for almost all of the students. But along with that, more other schemes will be brought up so that we can reach those students which we are not being able to reach. Last but not the least, accountability. Everyone connected with the education department, my, maybe it's teachers, students, the stakeholders, the, uh, the officers, everyone, the society, everyone will have to be accountable for the development. Right? Everyone will have to take accountability. So there are five pillars, accessibility, quality, affordability, accountability. Right? So these are the uh, inequality, that these are the pillars on which uh, the whole NEP is based on. And along with this, before bringing a change, we, we, also, we will also try to bring uh, the sense of respect for the, for the country, right? So these are the vision on which the whole national education policy is based on. Coming to the next one, the next page is on the key principles of NEP 2020. I am bringing in front of you the key principles of NEP 2020. The whole NAP revolves around these principles, just like in physics. You know? In physics, there was one formula called E equal to MC square, right? We might all remember that. E equal to MC square. And based on that formula, please mute yourself. Yeah. Okay. So, um, just like in physics, if you see the physics, there is one formula called E equal to MC square, right? Based on that formula, there are many laws which have come across, like Newton's law of motion, law of thermodynamics, law of energy. There are many laws. Well, I'm not going to talk about those laws, but just like that, the whole NAP is based upon these key principles. So I would request everyone for 101% attention while discussing this page. Let's have a look at what points they are bringing up. The first point is respect for diversity and local content. Now, if we look at India, we can say it's a mixture of many countries. It's so diverse. If suppose from if one outsider from foreign country, he comes for a for visit in India and he moves across all India. Say for the first month he stays in the north. He taste their food, their, their weather, he experienced the weather, he talked with the people, they, he starts learning about the culture. Next, that person moves to South and he learns about the same things. He experienced the food, the environment, everything. Then he comes to say Northeast and he starts moving across Northeast. He will be getting a lot of many changes, right? Yes or no? Can you give me, through, can you give me a yes or no through the chat box? Right. In a so diverse, like, and we need not go outside. If we move in northeast only, and if we start, say, taking Manipur as center, and we start moving to north, south, east, west, if we, from every step we take, we will be getting change not only in the taste of food, but also in the taste of you know uh, the language, the dialect. Everything will change. There is one uh, line in Hindi which I would like to quote: "That kos kos pe badle pani." Every two miles, the taste of water changes. Or char kospe bani, and after every four miles, the dialect changes. But ek cheez jo nahi badalta wo Hindustani. And the thing that doesn't change, even after such diversity, is the unity. Unity among us, the unity that we have, even after so diverse diversity, is what 
it's not changed. And for retaining that unity, for for bringing that, keeping that unity, NEP says that the content that will be prepared for the students, it will be filled up with local content, local flavor, so that the students start respecting their own culture. They start knowing their own culture, first of all. Then they will be learning about other cultures so that they start connecting with the you know, uh, different cultures. So first point is respect for diversity and local context, which will be included in our content. Coming to the next one, you know, in the top right corner, emphasizing conceptual education. Now, this is a very big thing which everyone talks about, that removing rot learning, getting away from British learning method and implementing rot conceptual learning among the students. So this is what we'll be focusing on, that is uh, emphasizing conceptual understanding. Now, when I talk about conceptual understanding, I would like to connect this with an example. Say, suppose we learned many things. Okay. So, someone, okay, so no issues. So we learned, suppose I'd like to give make a inter small interaction with you all. Suppose we learned many things in school, right? But in previous, if we talk about British learning method, when you talk about rote learning method, most of the time, what happens is that the students start reading for the marks only. And say, if I ask questions to a class 9 student about que questions from class 7, he might not be able to answer it. Why? Because we have been working only for mark system. I'm not talking about all schools or all teachers, but I'm talking about the overall education system, which is happening, which we talk about. Uh, screen is not clear. It's clear from my side, sir. Uh, Ma'am, please uh, increase the quality of your video in the top right corner. You can share, you can increase the quality. Or else you can do one thing, we will share the PPD at the end of the session to the respect to the um, district coordinator. So he will share it with you all. Right? So, so uh, yeah, we have been working on good marks. I suppose, for example, okay, I'm sharing, stopping the screen for one minute. I'd like to do one small activity with you all, right? So we all might have learned about dynamo compressor in our school system, school time, right? Dynamo that it converts mechanical to electrical energy or compressor, it compresses the gases, increases the volume, right? That's the definition of the, these things. Now, you people are being associated with education, education for long, so you might be knowing the answers. If I ask you what is a dynamo, what is a compressor, you might be able to answer it. But... If some, if I ask someone who are who is not associated with education after say class eleven or twelve, he's working in different line. If I go and ask him what's the dynamo, what's the compressor, he might take some time. So let's do an activity. Since I have talked about, I have um, talked about um, compressor. So so let's discuss on this only. So when I talk about compressor, suppose um, there is a small kid at your house and it's very hot now now it's very cold but it's very hot outside and there's an ac inside your house right uh, say a four or five years kid now that kid is very much uh, curious that what is happening inside the room outside it's so hot inside it's so cold so what is happening so he comes and asks you he or she comes and asks you then mama papa it's so hot outside and so cold inside how is this compressor working? Now we know that a uh, compressor decreases the increases the pressure of a gas and so on. But we cannot say that definition to that small kid, can we? No, we cannot. Right? So we have to try to explain to that kid with a small activity, right? So let's do an activity so that we can. I've got a small activity. Most of, most of you might know this activity, and those and uh, for them for whom it will be new, it's very interesting. So I would request everyone to take their hand five centimeter away. Just keep it five centimeter away. Now, what we will do, we will blow, just blow like, oh, just blow, normal blow, blow the air. Now, if you are getting hot air, just write H in the chat box. And if you're getting cold air, write C. Obviously it's cold, so it might take a little time. Just blow normally hot, I like. Make the sound of hot. Are you feeling hot or cold? 
it might be very cold in Manipur, so that's why. Uh, yeah, it's <sighs> hot, right? Okay, everyone is saying hot. Marjit sir, Salam sir, Nita ma'am, Bicha, Justin sir, Vinita ma'am. Yeah, everyone is saying hot. Now what we'll do? Everyone might be using Facebook, and so nowadays when we use Facebook, when we give photos, we used to do one thing. That is, we used to pout our mouth. We used to pout so that our chin becomes you know, thin. So now what we'll do? We'll compress our lips, like we'll pout, and now we will blow. Just compress as much as you can. Compress your lips as much as you can. And now you blow. What are you getting? Hot or cold now? Everyone, everyone in the, everyone who is, who is there. I would like everyone to do this activity. Dylan, I will make some settings, man. For, yeah. Okay, Solomon sir also said, cold, cold, neither sir, cold, cold. Okay, everyone's saying cold. Fine. Those who are saying H, I'm getting two responses H. So please compress your lips as much as you can. Yeah. Everyone, thank you so much. Well, in the sir, Pritam sir, Simbia sir, Kukram sir, Devala sir, ma'am. Yeah. Cold, right? So is this not how a compressor works? So it compresses the pressure, which decreases, which makes the cold air to come out. So cool with a whistling sound. Yeah. So if we teach this way to the kid, maybe after, even after 10, 15 years, when the student gets to class eight or nine and when he or she gets the topic of compressor, he, he will not be able to write this activity in the question on paper, definitely. If he writes this thing, he will be getting zero out of 10. But when the teacher will be bringing the topic of compressor in front of the kid, so he will be able to relate to the activity which we have done in the um, when he was a child, he or she was a child. So this this is what about conceptual understanding, what conceptual discussion I'm talking about. Now there are so many examples which we can take. Like one last example which I would like to tell you. Like if I ask you, what is the color of sun? Can anyone tell me what is the color of sun? Hint is that I'm talking about conceptual understanding. Please do not Google. Uh, please don't Google and answer it. Just, what is the color of sun? Hint is I'm talking about conceptual understanding. Yellow, yellow, okay. White, orange, red. Aren't we talking about one sun which we see every day? Okay, I'm getting so many mixed responses. Orange, crimson, okay. Yellow, golden, yellow. Okay, best time for photography. Golden, yellow, evening time. Yeah. Yellow, orange, white, hot. Okay, hot is not a color. But yeah, anyways, color of fire. So many responses. Okay. We might have drawn in the in the childhood. We, we have learned drawing mountains, right? Big, big mountains with the color of green and in between that, we used to draw the sun with the color of yellow. So from there, I guess the color of yellow came. Anthony Sir said we cure. Okay. Color came. And we also had some red ball of sun or la la sonica gola. From that, the color of red came. Or when we look outside, yes, we see different colors with different change of time. In the evening time, we see golden color. But I would like to give my response. Those who have said white or those who have given the answer as vip cure, I'd like to go with their answer. And my answer is the color of sun is white. Actually, it's colorless. So why do we see those colors? Why do we see so many colors? Why do we see that vip cure color? So what happens when the sun rays come inside our earth? There are many dust particles, right? So it, there's a term called diffraction. So it collides into the dust particles and it gets separated into seven colors the white color gets converted to seven colors and we know that due to we can see different wavelength like with different distance right so that's why we see different colors at different point of time right in evening time which is the best time for photography golden yellow or orange we see different different colors 
Now, how can we make the students understand this? How we can tell them that, yes, of course, we have to teach them that the color of sun is yellow from the copy, from the book which we are getting. Definitely, we have to give them that concept also. But along with that, if we are trying to give them conceptual understanding, we can do different experiments, which I think you have, you might have done in your schools. Like, we can use prism, right? When we use prism, if you allow the sun ray to fall from one side, you'll be able to see that it, it gets converted into seven colors when it passes through the prism. So that way we can make the students connect that it's um, seven colors. Yes, I got a response that Newton disk, exactly. We can use a disk also. When the sun ray falls on a disk, you will be able to see seven colors or some teachers use oil also. When the ray falls on the oil, we get seven colors. So yes, that's what I'm talking about, conceptual understanding so that they can uh, relate it to their day-to-day -day life so that they can remember it for their throughout life. Whatever concept we are trying to give them, it should be a conceptual way of understanding. It should not be rote learning. That is the main point which I'm trying to connect. I hope you liked uh, the example. So yes, because of shortage of time, I'll be sharing only two examples. If I get more time later on, I'll be sharing those, the new ideas also. The third point is equity and inclusion. A nation has got two resources, which only two resources a nation have got. First is natural resources, and second is human resources. Any nation which uses this these two resources up to full um, you know, you, you can utilize it fully. If these two resources are being utilized fully, then that nation is a developed nation. You can take examples from any kind of nations. Uh, we can, there are so many examples which history gives us, like Germany, Japan, like Singapore. There are so many examples. We know how they were and how they developed themselves. And how did they develop themselves? By the utilization of natural resources and the human resources. If you look at the history of Singapore also, they do not have much of natural resources, but they try to um, go for 100% utilization of the human resources. And that way they are, we know where Singapore is right now. We know where Germany is right now. We know where Japan is right now. So NAP says that uh, for achieving the, um, the whole, the points which we are trying to achieve, the 400% successfulness, we have, to utilize our um, two resources, natural resources, human resources. So bring bringing equality among all the students, right? The next point is unique capabilities. Now every student have got a certain unique capability. And we as a teacher, we as a mentor, it's our responsibility to bring out that capabilities. And that capability comes out only when the students gets a certain kind of environment. There is there's, a, uh, there's so many examples which um, proves this point. Like recently uh, in the COVID pandemic time, right? even now we are having a pandemic. In March 2020, I'm, I'm sharing one person experience with you all. So in March 2020, when the pandemic started, I started noticing one very interesting thing. When I opened my WhatsApp and I start looking at the chat box, I used to see that Many of my colleagues, many of my friends, many of the teachers started doing very interesting things. Some of them whom I've never heard list, uh, singing, they started singing. They start, some of them started painting things. Some of them started cooking. I've never seen them cooking, but they were doing it very marvelous, marvelously. Now, when I interacted with them, that I've, I asked my friends whom I've never seen doing that. So I asked them that um, I've never seen you drawing out or I've never seen you playing a guitar or singing. So how come you learn so quickly? They gave me one response that actually we used to do this when we were a child, but due to um, the monotonous life, we didn't get time to work on that. But since we are now spending more time with ourselves due to this pandemic, we have started again, uh, we have started singing again or started playing our guitar again or started cooking again. So um, so they started those things when they started uh, connecting themselves or spending time with themselves, right? When they got that environment. Now, that is what we're talking about, that every kid, if you notice properly, there might be a certain unique capability among 
every student. Some student might be good at vocational training, maybe art and craft. So we have to bring out those unique capabilities from the students. That was the fourth point. The fifth point is community participation. Now, before moving into the community participation, I would like to connect this with one example. Have you heard about fire triangle? Can you respond to the chat box, yes or no? Fire triangle, have you heard about fire triangle? Like there are three elements. Uh, someone is saying that it's not clear. If, if the screen is not clear, if the PPT is not clear, please increase the quality of the video. There are three elements which constitutes fire. There's three elements with the help of which if those three elements are not present, then we will not get fire. Well, I'll be giving hints. You can answer the next one. So first is oxygen. If I'm talking about the fire triangle, there is oxygen. What can be the next two? Can anyone guess? Oxygen. Yes. And thank you so much. Uh, I tackling bum oxygen heat and fuel search it sonelika soy bum sir said oxygen ignition temperature fuel heat exactly oxygen fuel and heat we will be needing three things for considering fire right and uh, if you if anyone of you have uh, gone through uh, fire fire training of some trainings under how to protect yourself when the fire comes they used to give only one training they used to say only one point that if you want to control fire, you can cut any of this element. If you cut any of this element, then you can extinguish the fire easily. Suppose we cover with a blanket. What we did, we, we cut off the oxygen. So the fire extinguishes or we remove the heat or we remove the fuel. The oxygen extinguishes. Right? So that is a fire triangle. Similar to fire triangle, our whole education system is based on three elements. Can anyone guess what other elements I'm talking about? There are th three elements based on which our whole education system is works on. One is teacher. Second, teacher. Guesses. Thank you so much, Angan Satongram, sir. Parents, teachers, and students. There are three elements due to which if the whole, all the three elements, Freedoms also say teachers, students, and parents. If all the three elements do not work together, then we cannot think about development of the education system. See, the school is ready. The teachers are well-to-do teachers, that pass teachers, well-to-do teachers, but the society is not willing to bring their students and get their students into the school. We cannot develop the education system. The society is ready. The teachers are ready, but we do not have proper infrastructure. How can we develop the education system? So community participation bring, plays a big role when we talk about education system. So I've seen many teachers taking so many initiatives for bringing the community to the school. They're bringing marvelous um, you know, activities or initiative for bringing the community. So we will be taking different initiatives so that we can bring the community among us, us. Along with this, we also be taking the help of different philanthropists like for the development of the education system. So the fifth point was community participation. Next is critical thinking and creativity. Definitely, if, you, if we are giving the students, the explaining the concepts to the students through experiential way of learning, through conceptual understanding, we will be helping them develop their critical thinking and creativity. Right. Next is use of technology. I think we all have understood the importance of technology. I think this, this pandemic, this COVID pandemic, have taught us the importance of technology, how important the knowledge, the technology is, the change which we are looking for. That We always talk about the change is the only constant. And I think, yes, we all have to be equipped with technology. And under NEP implementation, technology will be given much importance to bring different learning processes to support the deviants and for proper education planning and management, technology will play a big role. And last but not the least, continuous review and feedback. Now, when we talk about um, you know um, the review system of the school, you might be knowing that there is or there are hardly uh, one or two type of reviews like final examination, half field examination. There are only two reviews. 
But under NEP 2020, we say that there will be continuous review and feedback. Now what we do, who gives the review? Of course, the teachers, right? It's our duty of the teachers who gives, uh, who, who gives feedback to the uh, students. Now there will be three types of review. First, of course, the teachers will be giving a review. Second, we were talking about community participation, right? So we will also be taking feedback from the parents. So there will be parents' feedback. The parents will be giving feedback that how they are going to mark their students based upon certain parameters, of course. Right? Third, which is the very important thing, that is the, uh, sorry, there are four types, self, self-assessment. This is the main thing. Those students will also have to give, make self-assessment. And fourth, there will be four types of assessment which will be included under NAP. The one normal assessment, parents' assessment, self-assessment, and peer assessment. Now your friends will also be assessing you, will be giving certain points to you for your overall marks will be based upon their, uh, on your, you know, what your friends thinks. This is important because uh, the way of interaction is important. So this will help in building interaction among the students also. So there will be continuous review and feedback, right? So these are the principles of NAP. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Okay. Now, those of you who have um, searched for NEP over internet or if, if you have done any kind of sessions over internet, you might have seen this one. That current academic structure, which is 10 plus 2, will be moved to, will be changed to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. This is a new academic structure. But I want to discuss that why this change is needed. Exactly, right? Five plus three plus, everyone, everyone knows this. I think everyone knows by now that uh, we are going to change 10 plus two to five plus three plus three plus four. Now, if you look closely, you might not see so much of changes in this structure. Let's have a look at this. So first two years will be normal, um, uh, normal our uh, Anganwadi. First, uh, first, uh, first five years will be three years Anganwadi and two years one and two. Even before also, there was Anganwadi. And uh, two years, obviously, within class. Right? Then three plus three plus three plus four. Main question is, why this change is needed? Scientifically, it is proven that 85% um, mental development of a student takes place by the age of five. That's right. 85% developmental development of a student takes place by the age of five. That means when the student enters our education system by the age of six um, in class one, then already 85% development have been take, have taken place. So, um, so we are missing out those part of the years where we could have worked on the students, where our education department could have worked on the students. And that is the reason why we have changed the academic structure from 10 plus 2 to new academic structure, 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Earlier, Anganwadi was not under education department. It was under women and child development, health and family welfare, and tribal affairs. Right? Uh, health and family, women and um, child development, and health and family affairs. Now, under the new structure, this is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Anganwadi comes under education department, MHRD ministry. Okay, let me correct myself. It's not MHRD. It is MOE, Ministry of Education. Under NAP 2020, Ministry of Human Resource and Development have been renamed as Ministry of Education. Right. So now, Anganwadi will be, will be under four parts. Oh, yeah. MHRD, Women and Child Development, Health and Family Welfare, and Tribal Affairs. Right. So, um, why was Anganwadi actually started? What are the main reasons why Anganwadi was started? Let's have a discussion, quick discussion on that. There are many points, but three main points why Anganwadi was started was, first of all, the students, the parents of the kids who are coming to the government schools, mo mostly the whole, the board parents used to go for work, right? So there was no one to take care of the students. So Anganwadi was playing a big role for proper caretaking of the students. Second, India have got the highest number of malnutrition. And Anganwadi, with the help of the diet which they were providing, it played a big role in solving this problem, in 
bringing the percentage of malnutrition to a lower level. Third, when a student moves to a school, he comes under many restrictions. The whole suddenly, if a student goes to a school, it might be difficult for that student to cope up with the school's environment. So Anganwadi helps the students so that they can get a habit of staying away from home and mingling with other students. So it helps in the transformation that takes place from Anganwadi to school. These are the main roles. Now, when um, Anganwadi comes under education department, so the workers or the Anganwadi, the people who have been working under Anganwadi, they will be also giving, be giving training for the development of the uh, Anganwadi workers. Those who have passed 10 plus two, they will be giving, they will be given six months training program. And those who have not passed 10 and are working under NAP, they are under Anganwadi, they will be given one year's diploma course. Right? So uh, certain programs will start definitely. So first five years, we have understood Anganwadi, three years and two years is one and two, age six to eight, age three to eight, first five years. Next three years is three to five. Class three to five is the next six years where it will be also activity-based learning. Next three years is six to eight. Now, this under this uh, category from six, class six, we will be starting the vocational training of the students. The students who are interested in art and craft, they will be able to continue with art and craft. So from class six, we'll be starting with vocational training. And also, we, you might have heard about um, this one, um, coding, yeah, we'll be starting coding also from class 6 to 8 and from 9 to 12 and last 4 years is 9 to 12. So 5, 3, 3 and 4, last 4 years is 9 to 12, which is known as the secondary stage. So there are also definitely going to be changes in the last 4 years like uh, matriculation will not be there. There will be 6 six months duration courses and also you can select subjects according to your wish on in class 12 in class 11 and 12 so we'll be having discussion on that so i hope this slide is clear um someone is yeah uh gonna say said five plus three plus three plus four not too much burden for the students yeah exactly so uh Let's have a talk about uh, the ECCE, Early Childhood Care and Education. So uh, the first five years, that is the Anganwadi in class, uh, first two years, is known as ECCE, Early Childhood Care and Education. Right? So under for the Early Childhood Care and Education, we'll be having a separate framework which will be uh, preparing the pedagogies or the how we are going to nurture them, which is the, uh, and it will be under it, it will be known as NCPFECE, National Curricular and Pedagogical Framework for Early Childhood Education. It will be drafted by under NCRT. So there will be a certain framework, certain uh, under which under National Curriculum and Pedagogical Framework for Early Childhood Education, we'll be preparing the whole framework under which the students will be, it will be drafted, how we'll be uh, preparing the course and all for them. Right. The first point is that. Next, we have got uh, another point that is multifaceted framework. Okay. Before going to that, I would like to have a discussion on one point. Those who have got um, small childs at their home, or you might maybe uh, there is a child of your brother or sister at your home, right? Or in general, what do you think the children used to with teach uh, before moving to the school? Sorry. Let me rephrase myself. Before giving the students, before giving the students to the school, before the students go to school, we used to teach the students, our kids, certain things at home itself. So what other things did you taught? What things did you taught your students at your at your place? Play with toys, singing rhymes. Connoisseur said, uh, okay, you have not answered my question. Connoisseur said, uh, five plus three plus two, not too much burden for the children. Okay, okay, that was a question. Fine. Yes, sir, definitely it will not be a burden for the students. Five plus three plus four. I think if I'm getting the question correctly, uh, you are asking me, is it not, it will not 
it be a burden? So you are telling me that it will be a burden for the students. Am I right or wrong? Can you please rephrase the question, Connor, sir? Yeah. So I'm continuing with the session. Yeah, okay. So I'm getting responses. Etiquette, playing, hygiene, yes. Speaking. We teach them speaking. We teach them rhymes. Okay, Connor, sir. Okay. Fine. It will not be a burden, actually, because why I'm saying it's not a burden, I'll answer this in this slide. I'll be answering Connor, sir's question in this slide. Okay, so you will get the answer. Okay, thank you so much for the responses. Showing pictures, rhymes, ABC, rhymes. Yeah, exactly. Before, give, uh, before the students go to the school, we teach them many things at the home, at our home itself. Like, like uh, just like you say, the talking, teaching, we um, teach them etiquettes, how to behave, how to self-identification. We have teach them that. We even connect them with art and craft. We bring small toys from the market, like small guitars or small piano and all, and we make them play. So we're also connecting them with art and craft. We play a song and we ask them to dance also. We teach them stories. Dadding, adding, dance. Yeah. Speaking, uh, we teach them alphabet. We teach them colors. We even connect them with the nature also. When we take them outside for a stroll, we even tell that it's a mango tree. Uh, we should not throw our plastics outside. We teach them so many things. We teach a lot of things before going to the school, right? So what we're trying to do, we are trying to develop the curiosity among the students. We're trying to uh, develop problem solving and logical thinking among the students. They learn themselves by imitating also. Exactly. The students also learn by imitating. So these there are many things which we teach them before going to the school. And all these things which you have been teaching them at your place is known as multifaceted framework. In normal school, what we do, we give them books and all. But in the early childhood on the framework, for the first five years, the students will not be introduced with examinations or different kind of studies. They will be involved with the multifaceted framework which you people have been doing at your home. So students will be uh, made to play different games, problem solving, zigsaw, visual art and craft, puppetry. So for the first five years, they will only be playing. Will be making them love their school, right? Normally, it's seen that um, students don't feel like going to the school. Why do they don't feel like going to school? Because the main entertainment, the main joy they get at their home. At home, they used to play. They get to play with their friends. They can do whatever they want. But in school, they have to only study and all. So under multifaceted framework, it has been fixed that under NAP they will be introduced with games only. So my answer to this, um, I'm answering this question for Connor, sir. So you've asked me that will not, will it be a burden for them? It will not be a burden. Why? Because for the first five years, the students will only be playing through different game-based activities for the five, first five years. For the next three years, they will be again, it will be, will be sl slowly introducing the topics to them. Will not be giving them um, enough burden or examinations, right? From class six, the vocational training or coding, which I'm talking about, it will be optional. It's not compulsory for the students. Suppose I'm an artist, I play guitar, and I want to pursue, I also want to learn about music. So in, in current scenario, after school, I have to go for a teacher, I'll have to take another classes. But in school only, they'll be giving the platform that if you're interested in music, you can continue that. If you're interested in playing, you can continue that from class six so that after class 12, you can take the profession you want. That's one thing. Secondly, in 11 and 12, normally what happens, we are given certain subjects uh, stream-wise, but now you will not be able to, you do not have to select the stream. You can select subjects. So I think that's why this will not be a burden for the students, five plus three plus three plus four. Yeah. So that is multifaceted framework. First point was NCP, FEC. Next, research and best practices. So under NEP, we are trying to bring the best practices, which is being used among all across different countries. So there will be continuous research and best practices so that we can bring out the best for the students. Last but not least, three-month play-based module. Exactly. For vocational training, schools needs upliftment. I totally agree with that. So. Um, for this question, 
they will be answered in the um, in the coming slide because there is a certain timeline. Of course, NEP. Uh, if you think about NEP, uh, if you want to implement in within one year or two years, it is not possible because it's a really big project. And first and most important thing is, of course, whatever what Daisy Ma'am said that for, uh, upliftment, school upliftment, infrastructure development is first first thing before um, bringing those changes. So it will definitely take place. It's a, it will take time slowly, right? We all have to, and we all have to be a part of it. So uh, the, the last so the last last point is school preparation module. One question to all of you. Did anyone of you experience this? Just say the answer yes or no through the chat box. That during childhood, maybe due to X, Y, Z reason, we need to, uh, some might, some of, did someone of you have to change your school? And after changing to the school, after going to the new school, say in class four or five, you went to the new school. The teachers are also great. The students are also great. But due to some reason, you are not, you could not connect yourself to the school. And due to that reason, your performance got low. Did anyone experience this? Just say yes or no. Or do you think that this might happen to a student? If says, um, I'll be rephrasing my answer. Just give honest answers, yes or no. If a student have to change their school in between, the school is great, the teachers are great, but due to some reason, the student is not being able to cope up. And that affects his education. So the responses I'm getting is no, yes, no, no, no. I personally experienced that. I I changed my school two times due to you know transfer and all, my father's transfer and all. So I faced that. So that's why I ask yes or no. No, I haven't. Genuine answers. When I ask this question to the teachers, the most answers I get is no. And only few answers out of 100, I get only 20 answers as yes. And... 80 as no, 80 percent as no. Depends upon the school. And that is the reason why this thing goes unnoticed. Suppose a new student comes, you are teaching very nicely, the friends are also good, but he's not being able to cope up. So one thing that comes to our mind that the student is not studious or maybe there's some fault in that, that one guy. But the reason might be different. He's not being able to cope up with these things. And NEP thinks that this might ha happen to the students also. So they have they are going to start three-month play-based module. What is this? Um, when the student, now Anganwadi is also under education department. Now when the student uh, moves from Anganwadi to class one and two, they will have to, um, every student will have to go through a three-month play-based module where the students will be only they will be only playing and trying to connect to the school. So three-month play-based module will be prepared for all the students so that this thing does not happen, so that the student does not get, um, you know, difficulty in changing, this, in, in changing the class. So for solving that problem, which I talked about right now, so they are going to bring that three-month play-based module. So this is all about early childhood care and education. Coming to the next slide is, um, okay, curriculum. They are talking about curriculum. Now, my next question to all of you, do you think there should be a reduction in the curriculum, the curriculum which we are having right now? Yes or no? You can answer through the chat box. Until then, till I get the answers, I would like to share one experience of my own. In our school, when I was in school, yes, no, I'm getting yes, no, yes, no mixed. In our school, what happened? There was one teacher. I will, I won't, I won't take his name, but he was very nice. He used to explain all the things in experiential way. For explaining simple topics, also he used to take us to the playground, make us play, and um, you know, do different kind of activities to explain certain topics. And suppose, and that way, the class. Which, which needs to be completed in 20 minutes, the topic, it takes around 40 minutes for him. And it was a very nice way of learning. But suppose in some year, if suppose if there is some kind of vacation or if some kind of, uh, you know, um, one month gap comes in between, say he's sick or suppose different kind of reason, X, Y, Z reason, if he doesn't come to school, if, he, if there's one month gap in his teaching, 
then after he comes our father comes and you should tell tell him tell sir that you have to speed up your uh, process of teaching otherwise we will not be able to complete the course before examinations and the teacher of course uh, there is pressure of completing the course also so he again starts teaching the normal way he have to um, you know move from the experiential learning to the normal way of teaching because in our schools apart from teaching there are many things which we need to do annual sports is there farewell is there parents teachers meeting is there gunotsov is there and x y z there are so many things which i might not be remembering right now so there are so many things and along with that if we tell the teachers that you have to complete all the chapters and also you have to make the students make it interactive make it experiential make it um, improve the critical thinking i think it might be a little difficult for the teachers so that's why under nep it's being said that we are going to reduce 30% of the syllabus for the students which will include only the core essentials which we need so yes those who have said yes good news for them that we are going to reduce it to 30% 30% curriculum will be reduced so that the main so that we can focus on the core concepts help work on the critical development of the critical thinking of the students make the class interactive and bring experiential learning among the students so yes there will be a reduction in course now when we are talk we have talked about a reduction of course we have talked about the academic academic sir someone want to say something someone please mute yourself whoever is there so um we have are uh, focusing on competency based there are certain learning outcomes which we will be focusing on the certain integration of subjects let's have a discussion on that first is competency based education we will be trying to implement we will be trying to um work on the competency based education of the students now what is competency based education in simple terms if i would like to uh, if like to say competency based education is when a student uses knowledge skills and abilities to perform a task it is known as competency based education and as a teacher we have to work on all these three things let me give an example knowledge of course we have to teach the students what is there in the book right so that is knowledge next is skill we have to convert we not only that knowledge will have to be converted into abilities uh, sorry skills now how we can convert it into skills by using different activities maybe through when you teach the students through game based when we when you use stories for teaching the students or when you give homeworks which they can connect it to the environment say i am teaching them addition and i give them a homework that you go home ask all the family members their age and sum that up and you tell me what what will be the total age like many things like we can give them to go to the supermarket and buy two things and what will be the total or if i subtract this what will be that one so that way we'll be developing the skills knowledge skills and abilities now abilities is something which is which is uh non measurable or, or which we cannot develop it comes from within just like the unique capabilities which we were talking about say um you teach the students through storytelling and you teach in such a way that one of a student later on becomes a good storyteller himself or say he becomes a poet or a, a writer right so that is the abilities so the abilities comes out when we are creating an environment for developing the skills so knowledge can be converted into skills to different activities different pedagogies and when we are doing this the abilities of the students will be developed so when the students we are being able to connect these three things knowledge skills and abilities then it is known as competency based education right coming to the next one integration of subjects okay before moving on interaction integration of subjects i would like to ask you again what was your favorite subject in your school everyone mine was uh, mathematics so what was your favorite subject reducing the curriculum will it reduce the competency of students 
Sun Relica Sir said, um, I don't think so because the team which will be preparing on the curriculum, they will be um, reducing the curriculum in such a way that the core essentials, there was one point that core essentials, the core essence will be focusing on the core essentials so that the outcomes do not get affected. But yes, main will be focusing on the practical thing. Okay, so I'm getting responses. English, English, moral science. I'm stopping the share, stopping the screen again. Okay. Um, English, science, social science. Salam says it's science. Menegas says, Menegas, uh, ma'am said English. Kimboy says it's English. Ranjana, science. Rita Salam, maths. Angam Singh, science, science, English. Okay, there are a mixture of subjects. In school, I fail, uh, I'm sharing my experiences only. Might be you might have also experienced the same thing. In school, what happened? Many students do not like, uh, few students do not like certain subjects. Say there are uh, students who do not like mathematics. So if, the, if in a normal class scenario, uh, there is a PT class, say, in sports class, right? And in sports class, the PT teacher is absent. And say the maths teacher came, come to the class. And those who do not like maths, they will be doing one thing. Either they will be uh, taking fight, finding a place in a classroom in such a way that the teacher could not see him, first thing. Or secondly, they will be looking at the board and drawing, scribbling on their notebooks, drawing different things so that the class may pass out. Right? So, um, I, I've, I've, um, I've um, experienced that in my class. So normally, it's under NAP, it also says that when we talk about subjects, it's seen that most of the students do not like certain subjects. So they are talking about integration of subjects. Say, suppose I've got certain pens. I've got uh, pens on my hand. Say these are subjects, English, maths, social studies, and science. English, maths, social studies, and science, these are subjects. NAP is saying that we are just throwing the subjects to the students and they are not being able to catch it. Now, let me do an activity so that I can connect this. Um, yes, uh, liking the subject also depends upon the teachers. Exactly. I totally agree with you. Exactly. Most of you might be liking cricket, right? So suppose these are four balls. And if I throw this to you, will you be able to catch all the balls at a time together? Now you can respond through yes or no. If these are four balls, it's English, science, maths, and social studies, if I throw these balls together at you, will you be able to catch it? No, no way, no way, definitely. Everyone's saying no, no. Okay. Now, okay, fine. Everyone's saying no, so I'll do one thing. I'll do one thing. No, I want everyone to catch this. I want every one of you to catch these balls together. So I have got one idea. Depends on the way of throwing. Okay. So I have got one interesting idea. I've got one rubber band. So I will be bundling it up, tying it up together tightly. Yes, it's full tight. Hmm. Now, if I throw this to you this way, will you be able to catch it? Please respond yes or no. Who loves cricket when if I now if I am tying it up totally? Now yes we can definitely definitely. Now again uh, someone said it it will depend upon the way of throwing definitely if I throw it like this way we will not be able to catch it but yes in general yes now it will be feasible it will be possible for us to try at least to catch these things right. So that is what uh, NEP is talking about integration of subjects they are telling that we will be integrating the subjects and giving it to the students so that when we are teaching one subject, we are also trying to bring up different subjects. If I'm an English teacher, I'm also, or my English subject will be framed in such a way, made in such a way that the students are also getting knowledge about maybe environmental studies or social studies. It will be framed in such a way. Uh, let me take one more example. Of course, it might not be a relevant example for subjects, but still. Mm. What is what can you see? I'm. Uh, what is this? If I ask you, what is this? I'm putting something in front of the camera. What is this? Can anyone tell me? What can you see in the screen? Finger, okay. So I said finger, index finger, index finger, okay. Index finger, okay. Fine. 
So this is index finger. Now, what is this? If this is index finger, then someone said one, okay. So finger, if this was finger, then this was this will be fingers. Yes. Similarly, if I ask what is this, again, it will be finger, fingers, or my mom sir say two. And if if some if I saying two, then it will be three or thumb. Now let me integrate this. If I'm assuming this as a subject, let me integrate this or what are the things which I can connect with this one. So initially when I ask this, so someone said fingers, some might say that nail, right? Or finger or fingers. So if I'm talking about maths, it is one, two, one, two, and three. If I'm talking about English, then uh, if I talk in plural, singular plural, the finger, fingers, right? Or I can say index finger, middle finger, thumb, I'm talking about, so I'm integrating science, body parts, maths, one, two, three. Language also I can include, like um, if I'm talking about Hindi, ek ungli, do ungli, teen unglia. I don't know Manipuri, so sorry for that. So we can integrate English also. So in Asmis also we can say anguli. Right? So yeah, yeah. So we are integrating subjects. Kutsa. Someone say kutsa. Okay, one, two, three, what do we say in Manipuri? One, two, three. It's like if someone can respond through the chat box also. Teen kutsa. Kutsa in Manipuri. Okay, thank you so much. So finger, we can say kutsa. Ama ani ahum. Ama ani ahum. So ama ani ahum. Right? Okay, great. Thank you so much. So we are what we're try, trying to say, we are integrating maths, science, English. So this is this is the way. Obviously, this is Ama Ani Ahum. Okay, thank you so much for the responses. Yeah, everyone is saying giving their responses. So this this is the way how we are going to integrate the subjects with the students. So where so if you are if you're a sub teacher, maybe your chapters will be framed in such a way that you are also teaching the mathematics. When we're teaching the mathematics, maybe we're teaching them EVS. So that way our subjects, the new contents will be, which will be prepared the, with the reduction, of course, it will be framed in such a way, right? So integration of subjects. Again, let's move on to the PPT. Next was integration of subjects. Then third is development of scientific temper. Along with teaching, uh, we also help make the students develop, inculcate the value of constitutional values, patriotism, sacrifice, nonviolence, truth and honesty, peace, etc. We'll be helping in developing those things among the students. That is known as scientific temper. And also, there's a big problem of brain drain also. Right? So, and this, I think this will help in uh, coping up that part. Obviously, that's a debatable topic, so we won't go to that. So yes, through development of scientific temper. Next is no silos. Now, what is silos? Ama ani ahom one two three. Okay. So now, what is silos? Um, no silos among subjects and learning. No silos among means. What? Normally, when we talk about silos, silo is actually um, if you search what is a silo internet, you'll get that it's a big container for for storing grains and rice and everything, right? It's a big container. So when we talk about no silos, that means there is no confinement. So what kind of confinements are there? First, curricular and co-curricular activities. There will be no separation between curricular and co-curricular activities. When we will be, um, you know, um, the marking the students, it will be based upon two parts, academic and extracurricular activities. So now, from now on, the students, from, from when the vocational training starts, say from class six, the students, 50% uh, even, will be focusing on the extracurricular activities. So they will be giving, getting marks on that also, curricular and co-curricular. Next is um, academic and voc uh, vocational, sports and academics, and science and humanities. Now we are talking about 11 and 12, there is that there will be no separation of, you know, subjects or streams. When we talk about, there's a festival, actually. Uh, I'd like to move back a little to the past. That matriculation examination, is it's a kind of festival in our Indian society. The whole um, neighbor comes to our home to start asking that 
what 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 marks did you get and they start giving one free thing which we get in india one thing is free free of cost in india can you tell me what this is advice we start getting free advices from those people who have never cared what you are studying or what you are doing say on the day of class class um, in a class 10 result time many people will come to your place if you get good marks say 80% or 90% marks then they will be saying okay fine so this boy or girl can is fit for science then they can go for engineering then they can go for medical it's totally fine if suppose you had a fever or suppose due to bad health and you got unluckily you got 70% marks or say 60% marks then what that same person will say this guy is not fit for science he should go for um, commerce he should not go for science and by chance if by not god if by god grace this should not happen if you get 40 40% or say 50% then what the society will say his guy is totally not fit for science nor commerce you he, he or she should go directly for arts they should not even think for that they should go directly for arts right but now those teachers who are with connected with me through social media through zoom you might all agree with you i think you all will agree with me that that was such a wrong notion right based upon marks we cannot decide that what a student will go for science arts comma we cannot decide the stream based upon the marks because we have got our friends also who are good and bad in studies the school time but they are in very good positions now maybe they've cracked upsc or they've cracked apsc many of our friends who have finished engineering they have gone for filmmaking yeah um, and those who have in science stream they have moved to art stream jobs right so we cannot predict we cannot assume we cannot determine what kind of stream you can go for in class 10 and thankfully nepf understood that and after class 10 now stream will not choose you you um you will be choosing the subjects i go to the class and i say that okay i need biology okay i like physics acha i like accounts also so i will be selecting subjects and based upon that my curriculum will be for based on so this is what about no silos we were talking about under this the next is um promotion of multilingual teaching of course there will be multilingual teaching among the students along with this emphasize on digital literacy now um coding um coding we're talking about digital literacy and coding will be implemented from class 6 and as per news i don't know how much true is that i've heard that microsoft have been in talk with india and they've been um, suggesting that they want to prepare the course content for the students on coding so if that is true then we can imagine that how much beneficial it will be for the students like coding and it will be based or totally based on game based game based way coding will be game based way and from class 6 but you will be learning how to code through a play based method so these are the competencies which we will be focusing on for the development of the students now moving on to the next uh, moving on the next slide i hope you all are clear on this slide moving on to the next slide let's move on now uh, we have been talking about the development of the students we'll be talking about the reduction of curriculum but one very important thing which which usually goes ignored is the mental and physical health of the students so along with the reduction in curriculum along with the vocational training we will also be focusing focusing on the mental and physical health of the students we will be having annual health checkup for older learners there will be reduction in school bags also already it's already been reduced of course but the different state governments they have reduced the bag weights but still there will be more uh, reduction in the weights of bags along with this the students will be uh choosing the subject will be easier once also sometimes exactly along with this the students will be taught different mandatory skills which we need for our day to day life just like health nutrition physical fitness basic training how to give first aid and mental health is definitely important we have understood the importance of mental health this pandemic has taught us the importance of mental health and that's why there will be adequate number of counseling also for the students 
to monitor their mental and physical health. And for this, both um, the teachers, the principals, and uh, all the officials will be involved for implementing this part. Right? So mental and physical health will also be integrated, like different pedagogies and for innovative pedagogies for teaching, for transforming the teaching learning process. There will be experiential learning. Every teacher will be uh, made to use different pedagogies like art integrated, sports integrated, uh, storytelling, different pedagogies will be implemented. There will be bag list this where the students will be going just for, for implementing, for learning the things through activities. So bag list this will be there. And also peer tutoring, peer learning, which I think most of the teachers might be implementing in their schools also. When I talk that they say that, yes, we implement this. So peer learning is will also be you know um, implemented in the in our schools now the medium of instruction up to grade three will be home language both in private and government schools this will be implemented and every school uh, will be made to teach three languages to the students and this will be decided by the state that what kind of languages which languages they want to implement in their uh, schools. Along with this, if someone wants to implement classical language in the schools, they can also do that. So classical language, if someone is willing to teach about uh, on classical language, they can also do that. Now, we have been talking about, we have uh, talking about students, what kind of developments we are going to make for the students. You might be, most of you might be thinking that, is there any kind of changes that are being made for the teachers are they kind of any kind of changes so yes we are we have also certain things in our bucket for the teachers so here's what we are going to do for the teachers first will be four years integrated period normally normally um for getting into the teaching line what kind of degrees we normally need do we have dlet or ba right so we need graduation and also for 10 plus 2 also, we can go for um, dl -Ed. Now what happened? Uh, what will happen? That dl -Ed and b -Ed will be removed. And just like, you know, engineering, if you go for engineering or medical, there's a separate line, right? A separate profession, four years, five years profession. Similar to that, teaching will be made up certain profession. And instead of dl -Ed or b -Ed, there will be four years integrated b -Ed. Right. So there will be four years integrated BA for the students uh, who, who want to go for the teaching line. Those who are coming from the um, rural area, they will be also given given spe special scholarships for pursuing the four years integrated BA. Now, suppose you have done your bachelor degree and you want to continue for BA, then you can go for two years BA. If you have completed any kind of four years, um, you know, bachelor degree, and you want to go move to the teaching line, then you can go for one year B. Ed. So four years, two years, and one year option will be available for the students from 2030. From 2030, four years integrated B. Ed will be implemented for the teaching line, right? And uh, if I talk about when I when I was talking about teaching line, one very uh, interesting change is going to take place. Suppose after class 12, you went for a normal graduation, right? Now, at this point of time, in this in this kind of scenario, say you are uh, you are doing graduation, three years graduation you are doing. After two years, suppose um, uh, classical languages means uh, Malayalam, Tamil, peer learning is very important, exactly, exactly. <laughs> So um, normally, what happening in the current current uh, current time, uh, current scenario? If you if you are in a, in a graduation, say second year, and you want uh, to, you have got certain financial problem, and you want to go for a job. Now, what are the options available with us? We have to either leave the leave the education process. We have to either uh, and go for the you know course or we can do one thing, we will be completing the course, then we can we can go for job. But under NEP, they've, they'll be starting one very interesting thing. Suppose you were in the first year 
and now you want to leave your education and go for job you'll be getting one certificate certificate and you'll be you can go for job say after two years you think that i want to continue my education again you can join the college from the second year itself and continue education system that way there will be multi entry and exit point if i complete second year then i'll be getting diploma third year bachelor's fourth year research right so certificate diploma bachelor and research so there will be three things and you can you know that way we will be able to pursue our course and if you have got any kind of uh, if you want to um, take a break in between then we can take that also yes so is someone else asking about classical languages yes sanskrit tamil telugu kannada these are the classical languages different classical languages which are available among india so if someone is willing to implement sanskrit also in their school they can implement it that should be optional one right so four years integrated period along with that in the initial part when we were talking about principles there was one point that is community participation so one very interesting thing is being uh, is going to be implemented for the community participation part that is um one course will be implemented which is known as um, you know local teachers for the development of the local teachers which will be known as master instructors okay for 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 that i want to ask one question to all of you do you sometimes bring you know a renowned person there if we look around our school there are certain maybe someone is good at art and craft someone is might be a good police police officer do you bring them to the school sometimes for the uh, orientation of the students does anyone does that does anyone do that yes someone said like someone said it. yes yes okay great not yet okay so some one of some of some of us might bring might be bringing them or maybe some of you might be trying but not being able to do it due to different reasons they might not be available when you are asking for them or they are not willing to come so nap says that if we look around our school there are many resource persons many people who are good at many things but we are not being able to utilize their talent so that's why uh, one certain program will be started for the local people if someone is there in our multi exit point will reduce dropouts yeah so suppose around your school there are people who are good in music one plays very good guitar or play uh, sing well someone is there who is good in art and craft someone is a good businessman or someone is a good agriculture working in agriculture so they can go for the there will be certain programs one year program vocational program for them in the diets district district level training institutes or bites block level training institutes where they will be trained and then they will be uh, they will be uh, placed in different schools as master instructors they will be allotted in different schools and master instructors so that way what will happen will be also be using the local resources will be developing um jobs among the students along with this we'll also be using their talents so this is a very good initiative which we are going to do under nap 2020 for the teachers education and also for improving the teachers education there are many implementations which we are which we are going to take like strengthening that now that examination we all know that it's compulsory for um getting entry to the government schools now that will be compulsory both for private and government schools so if you are uh, willing to go for a private school if you want to enter a private school as a teacher you will also have to give that and it will soon be implemented so that will be compulsory for both second there will be transparent transfer system it have already been implemented already be started i guess so a transparent transfer system will be made uh, properly technology based planning for teacher recruitment one normal problem which i face when i go for school visits and all that is that uh, there's a big problem of teacher student ratio the 30 to 1 ratio is not being able to uh, it's not being maintained in many schools maybe students are 800 and teachers are two in some schools there are uh, three teachers and 60 students so the ratio is not being proper and also in some schools i face i've heard about one problem that is subject teachers so their subject teachers are not available so the main fraud the main root cause which the government have 
find out for this one is that they feel that this is happening because of um, not being able to properly track that data. So that is why IT-based proper forecasting is being implemented so that proper planning, teacher recruitment, so that we can plan for the next 20 years. So if I, I ask, after being implemented this one, if I ask anyone, say after 20 years, how many teachers will be needed in this block or how many subject teachers for science are being needed for this district so they will be able to answer that question. So technology-based planning for teachers. Then is text score and demonstration. After giving that, the teachers will have to go for a classroom demonstration, subject demonstration, along with a test score, right? And there will be certain certified courses. If suppose some of the teachers are willing to learn how to deal with uh, the young, the young kids or different ability kids, they will also they will be able to learn. They will be given certain certified course which they can take place, which they can take, right? And there will be continuous professional development of 50 hours, which our sir have all been already told that for every teacher, there will be 50 hours of continuous professional development. And I guess for um, most of the teachers are being associated with Orbino Society for the training program. So that also comes under this 50 hours of continuous professional development for the teachers. Along with that, um, certain different opportunities will be given for the teachers for development of the different pedagogies and all. So these are the things which we are going to implement for the, you know, teachers in, uh, someone is saying that transfer, transfer, transfer system is impossible in Manipur. Okay. Not slight, not, uh, it's good, but not, yeah, not possible. So we'll have, we'll have to work on that. Right? Now, one big problem that comes is the socially economically disadvantaged groups. In most places, we are not being able to reach the students. Socially economically disadvantaged groups, we're not being able to reach. So there will be certain initiatives that will be taken so that we can connect with the socially economically disadvantaged groups, like the schedule cross, schedule tribe, other backward areas, or maybe many areas where um, due to geographical identity, geographical problems, those are. Uh, in those places, we are not being able to start schools. So for those cases, we will be start, those places will be known as special economic zones, as EZs, where they will be taking different initiative so that we can start the basic minimum education system in their schools, right? Yeah, so these sort of vocational trainings and all. And there will be Parak. For all these implementations, definitely there, there should be a certain body which can supervise, which we can uh, look look after whether the things are properly being implemented or not. Right? So this will be taken care by Parak. The full form of Parak is known as Performance Assessment Review and Analysis of Knowledge for Holistic Development. So the main work of main work of uh, Parak will be proper assessment of the things that are being taken and uh, to check whether the 21st century skills are being achieved or not, and for all the surveys, everything will be done under PARA, right? So these are the things which are being implemented under NEP 2020. Now, just many say that, yes, many things are not uh, not being uh, applicable and all. So for implementing the NEP, government have set one certain timeline, just like in our life also, if we want to achieve something, we have to prepare a timeline. We have to set our goal properly so that we can achieve that. So let's have a look at the timeline which have been fixed for NEP from the 21 to 22, all the already gone. In 21, 20, what we have done, we have prepared the next framework for teachers' education. Right. So main framework have been prepared in 21 to 22. In 22 to 23, what we are going to do, teachers will be prepared for the proper assessment and there will be um, set up of national professional standard for teachers, NPS, they will be set, under which there will be certain guidelines under which the teachers will be given promotions. If one teacher is performing well, how he can be promoted. There will be certain leadership positions available. If if we talk about now, obviously, there now also there are certain positions, leadership positions where the teachers can apply for. Under as anti NPSD, they are saying that we'll be creating more such leadership positions so that the teachers can apply for that. Along with this, there will be proper assessment of the teachers so that we can find out whom to uh, whom to award and whom to not. 
just like in private companies if you see there is there are certain terms like key performance uh, key assessment like there are certain assessment points so same kind of assessment will be done for a teacher yes. so and how we are going to do that this will be prepared on in this financial year 22 to 23 under npst national professional standard for teachers 25 to 26 Within the year 25 to 26, we are planning to achieve 100% foundational literacy and numeracy up to grade 3, FLN, foundational literacy and numeracy, we are going to achieve by grade 3, where after that, a proper survey will be done, whether it is being achieved or not. 29 to 30, the four years BIT, integrated BIT, which we are talking about, it will be implemented in 29 to 40. And in 2040, by 2040, the whole NEP will be functional. So by 2040, we are planning that the whole NEP will be functional. Now, when I when I talk about uh, when I talk about this year that 2040, the whole NEP will be functional. One question which I get from many teachers that okay, by 2040 I will be retiring. So why should I know? Why should I need to know about NEP? Or by 2040, there will be hardly five years for my retirement. So I think I should not know about, uh, if even if I don't know about NAP, it will be fine. So if you are having such kind of doubts in your mind, so this is the answer for that. That uh, government is saying that the teachers who are retired or who are senior teachers, they are assets for us. So under NAP, they're saying they'll, they'll be forming a group where the teachers who have retired or if you have performed well in your school and have retired or the senior teachers will be brought into that group. Along with that, their alumni will also be there. So a group will be created of alumni, retired teachers and the senior teachers so that they can help the government for the upliftment of the new set of teachers. So yes, so if you are having any kind of doubts, so yes, uh, government is planning to bring you back to the education system even after retirement if you have, if you have performed well in your uh, days of school. Right. So these are the features. Um, the slides which I'm skipping right now, we have discussed about these points. So this we have prepared this so that it can be beneficial for you while going through the PPT. We'll sh definitely share the PPT with all of you after the session, and. If we talk about the role of governments, what, what will be the role of government and the different departments? So the state governments will be looking after the policy making. Director of, of Education will be looking after the operations. SCRT will be looking after the academics. Minimum common standards for online self-disclosure for all public and private schools to be set up by the uh, school authority. Right? So these are the things which are being, which are, which are the roles of um the government bodies how they will be helping us so this about this is all about the NEP 2020 now in the beginning in the beginning one thing uh one thing i told you that i've kept one suspense in front of you that why i was talking about ZIAI when we we're talking about NEP so here is the time where i'll be talking about our ipct program how ipct is helping to achieve NEP so just a small part, please be with me. So how IPCT is helping to achieve to achieve the vision of NEP 2020. Those of you who are associated with our program, you might be knowing about our IPCT app, Innovative Pashala Curriculum Tool. There's a platform where all the ideas, the teachers all across India, the ideas which have been received, almost 1,500 ideas, the ideas which have received, those ideas have been curated into the academic uh, state level course content and it has been divided into different lesson plans so those lesson plans which you will get in the innovative partial curriculum tool those ideas are experiential holistic integrated learner centered flexible and discovery oriented enjoyable different games and innovative ideas have also been used for making those content and this have been made based upon the principles of NEP 2020, which we have already discussed. NEP 2020 says that the, uh, okay, where is my slide? Yeah. NEP 2020 says that 
we have to work on the FLN, Foundation Literacy Numeracy, LSRW, reading, writing, and performing basic operations. We have to deal with those things. Keeping this in mind, the MS IPCD contents have been made in such a way that it helps the students for achieving the foundation literacy and numeracy within the stipulated time of within the stipulated time. Right? NEP says that we have to focus on 21st century skills to make the students future ready. Right? The IPCD content which we have prepared, every lesson plan, it focuses on what are the 21st century skills we have achieved? What are the MHRD outcomes we have achieved? Right. So we have focused on that. NEP says that the education system, in, uh, the content should be delivered in such a way that the cognitive, effective, and psychomotor abilities are um, so that we can work on those abilities. The IPCT content have been prepared using the 21st century Bloom's taxonomy. I think you might all be aware about this. So 21st century Bloom's taxonomy helps in the development of these three things only, cognitive, effective, and psychomotor domains. Right? NAP says that NAP talks about inclusive education for bringing a community such that all students are developed, all students are included. The IPC contents are prepared in such a way that it helps in the catering of the students' children with special needs. And for the for achieving the vision of NEP 2020, we have planned for something really big. I will talk to you about this within few five few seconds um, after going through this slide. Under NEP also, it, it says that 6% of the GDP, 6% of the GDP will be allotted for the Education Department under NEP 2020. And the big thing which I was talking about is the role model schools. That's right. For achieving the NEP in all the schools all across India, we are planning to select role model schools all across India. So what is this role model school? How are they going to help us? First of all, we are, going to, we are planning for selecting role model schools all across India from each and every district. Right? And if your school is selected for role model school, then what are the benefits that you'll be getting? First of all, the 50 hours of CVD, continuous professional development, which we were talking about. So that 50 hours of continuous professional development will be given to your school specially. LMS content, learning modules, different learning modules will be prepared, which will help in the teacher's motivation, parental guidelines, and students' learning videos especially for your school. A platform will be given for quality education and more facility support given from the ZI department from the Rupander program. One person will be allotted especially for your school who will be working with you for the development of the school and for implementing those ideas. And our main motto was, what are criteria for selection? I, I will move to that. And uh, when we're talking about IPCT, you might have noticed that our main motto was that Whatever idea you have got you know, from whatever part of, the, part of India that idea is from, our main motto is to take that idea to, a next, to the next level, all across India, all across the world. So from if you're implementing, if your school is selected for role model school from Manipur, and if you're implementing in Manipur, so how will the teacher from Andaman and Dew or how will a teacher from Pondicherry know about the implementations? For that, what we are going to do, Every school which is selected for role model school will be will get a web page. So this is a sample web page. Most of the teachers have already got from all across India. So what is this? It's a general web page which normal private schools have. So this is a page where your school name will be there. This is a sample video. So Rupantar Public School, your name will be there. Your principal photo will be there. What are the things you are doing under academic, core curricular? What are the ZI initiatives which you are taking for the implementation in your school? How? What are the things you have been doing? Everything. So this is a website. Username and password will be given to your school. You can, um, you will be able to use it as your, uh, you know, how you want to implement it. Right? And someone is asking me that how? What are the criteria for selection? Right now, um. There, uh, you can contact with the district coordinator who will be helping you for the selection of the role model schools. We are already in the process 
most of or if someone of your colleague is associated with the program rupanter program so you can select them so you can contact them and you can get the contact number of district coordinator or you can ask coordinate with the block officials they will give the district coordinator's phone uh, phone number hobam mr hobam so he will be helping you for how to implement for the rolmal school and again if any one of you want to if any one of you want to register your name for the zai program you can also do that by connecting with the district coordinator or the block officials right so this is about the uh, um, role model school another very interesting thing i just like to before winding up i just like to brief you about is the oro scholar app we have also started oro scholar program during the pandemic time we faced one major problem that is the students the teachers were not being able to connect with the teach students because of lack of smartphones they were not being able to connect so we cannot go to the students and give smartphones to everyone but yes we have taken one initiative and we have started the first scholarship program in india in asia of course first scholarship program which is known as oro scholar it starts from grade 1 to 12 it's very simple there are four quizzes and each subject you can take two retakes and there are 10 questions so the students will be getting if if he or she can answer 80% marks he or she will be getting 1000 rupees in his is in his or her bank account it's as simple as that and every month this amount gets credited to his or her account so for class 1 and 2 both for uh, private and government schools so you can implement you can download the app or a scholar app and you will be getting step by step process so you can try to implement it with your own kids so it's from class 1 to 12 and last before winding up i would like to introduce one thing that is project inclusion you have heard about one thing that is a uh, um certification course there will be certain certification courses for the students so uh, for the students so that uh, they can uh, sorry for the teachers if they want to do certain certification courses they will be helped under nep so this is also a part where we are helping students teachers for um for you know recognizing the students we are we are who are facing different difficulties in learning this project inclusion you know there are certain students you might be noticing in class there are certain students who are uh, not interested in education or uh, cannot memorize the things properly or cannot do not get they have got less amount of um, concentration so that might be a reason because of maybe that student is a Uh, may be facing neurodevelopment disorder. So for that reason, we have got project inclusion program, where um, the teachers are oriented how to connect with the students, how to deal with those problems. And right now we are active in nine states and five union territories for this program. And till now we have oriented twenty thousand teachers. Right. So this is about the project inclusion. Uh, if uh, this is uh, this is for the district officials. who are with us if you want us to have a program on project inclusion separately we can have so one along with this right so with this yeah or school with this we come to an end uh, how bomb sir is are you there with us how bomb sir district coordinator hello how bomb sir are you there with us so thank you so much thank you so much everyone for the time for the team all the district officials who are connected with us um so with this i like to wind up my session so i cannot give my contact number of if you want to contact me so you can get a number from howbom sir so head office may howbom sir are there one more call for you okay so i think um thank you so much all the officers and all of uh, all the participants I think with this we can wind up the session. Thank you so much.